me welcome everyone. Good to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. That's, uh, let's see here. I'll just take me out and then we can see April and Liz. That's, whoops, wrong, wrong one. Hang on. There's Beth. Hi, Beth. I'm just Hi. Gonna, there, there's everybody now. It's kind of fun. <laughs> All right, there's April and Liz. April on the right and Liz on the uh, left there. Thanks, ladies, for doing this. Thanks to everybody for joining us tonight so that we can uh, enjoy this tour. Now, this is Alana Carr Revisited an Ari Embroidery Project, right? Did I get it all right? Excellent. Yeah. Nailed wow. it. Liz, Liz Williamson. So we're going to get to learn about this uh, this project and then tour some of the um, uh, some of the work there. So it's going to be a fun evening. In the background, it's raining in Sydney. So we hear the rain. It's, it's part of our relaxation effort here. <laughs> so uh, that's Embroidery good. Embroidery and rain sound effects. That's right. It's all about atmosphere. That's right. Um, okay, so now remember, folks, uh, no meditative stitching Sunday. Instead, at 2 o'clock, we'll have Andrea Cabral of Black Cat Creative Studio live. And remember, I'm putting the podcast up on Saturday night so you can listen to the podcast. And then enjoy a, a live show with Andrea talking about her different uh, embroideries on Sunday. So a little different for the Sunday meditative thing. And then remember uh, Monday Hearts, Stitch on Your Heart projects for Monday and post them on Instagram, FT Monday Hearts. That's it. That's all the announcements. So April and Liz, um, have at it. Thank you. Um, I'll quickly introduce Liz before we get started. So this is the amazing Liz Williamson, who is an associate professor at UNSW, uh, which is one of the main universities here in Sydney. Uh, and she is a textiles everything, but a weaver by practice. And so this is um, a whole project she's been working on for many years um, with um, a community of artisans in um, West Bengal in India. So I'm going to get Liz to tell you about that because she knows more. Because I'll swing around the camera and she can give you some backstory. So Liz, so I you want to tell us about? Um, hang on, lost you. About the the project. So it does go back a long way, but thank you, um, April, and I'm pleased to uh, introduce the exhibition Ala Khan revisited an our embroidery project. So. It really started in 2001 when I did two things. I visited India, which I hadn't been to for decades, uh, and fell in love with the place again. And I was also invited to be part of a conference in Hanoi, Vietnam, uh, that UNESCO funded. It was called Vital Traditions, and it brought together artisans from 14 different countries in Asia plus facilitators, and then a group of people to lead workshops. And I um, led the weaving workshop. There was also a natural dye workshop, embroidery and design workshops. So um, the whole idea of that workshop was to engage with artisans and to work with them on developing new designs from their tradition evolving their traditional design into something that was more contemporary, appropriate for the marketplace, whether that marketplace be the next town, the big city or the next country or internationally. So uh, it was a wonderful opportunity for me, but it was the first time that I realised I could use my weaving expertise and knowledge to engage with groups of artisans. And the, one of the people I got to know was Arani Sin, and from her from Calcutta in West Bengal, she runs a business called Craft Resources Centre, and generally known as CRC. So I kept in touch with Arani, um, and initially in the first period of time, I did workshops in other Asian countries, uh, Pakistan, Tibet, and and in India, and then Arani, uh, I commissioned some of my designs being woven through her uh, and they were woven in Fulia in West Bengal. So they were the wraps and scarves. But in that process, I saw some of the embroideries from a group in um, Howard District, West, 
West Bengal. The group is called Zadosi Original. Zadosi is a term for gold thread or gold embroidery. It's a general term. Um, but And this that's their expertise. Well, the Mughal style Ari embroidery is the expertise of the group called Zadosi Original. So initially, the first things I had may have commissioned were scarves made uh, mm -hmm. scarves using a traditional Mughal design. It's not a, um, dissimilar to the scarf that I'm wearing uh, and their embroidery. So they, with our embroidery, they use three different stitches, mainly chain stitch, French knots and an Ari stitch. And this, these scarves that I commissioned were done in their traditional uh, designs, but my colours and it changed uh, their designs. They were much more appealing, I thought. <laughs> and they were successful too. So there are some in the shop. April mentioned there's some of those scarves in the shop. But in that process, uh, during that process, I thought it would be good to do a contemporary design project with Zodosi Original. And that's what Alan Lacar Revisited Exhibition is. It's about that process. So Alan Lacar means tracery or light um, embellishment, but it also has a meaning of adding value and changing the context. And so that idea of adding value was behind the project, adding value to their knowledge of design, contemporary design. Uh, and for it wasn't a co-design project, but it was a collaboration where I commissioned them to do the embroideries. But they they had a role to play in the embroideries too. So the initial uh, group of embroideries was done in 2014, 2015, and exhibited in that year, 2015. Now, Liz, and Liz, they were, Liz. Hmm? Uh, yes. Uh, who who are we working with? What is it? A group of women, uh, local women. Uh, what is the who is doing the work? Yes. So there are uh, so the original ma mainly men. Our embroidery in India is usually conducted by men, uh, Muslim men. The tradition comes from Persia, and was it brought to India in the Mughal era centuries ago. So it's mainly men, although this group was, it was uh, there was an exception in this group. So when uh, they did the original project, there were about 20 men working for Zodosi Original. Uh, the leader was Hiro, uh, Hira uh, Mondal, and he had learnt from a neighbour how to do embroidery, how to do our embroidery. His father had, had a, was a motor mechanic, so it wasn't a family tradition, but it suited him. And he uh, set up Sodosi Original in his village to employ uh, men from the local area. I had been told, before I visited, I'd been told it was a very harmonious village. That means it re was religiously harmonious in that the various groups yeah. all got on well. And I felt that in the village it was very peaceful, very green, beautiful clean village, but um, at the same time my project was running, uh, CRC, who are a fair trade organisation, had written an article for uh, International Fair Trade website about International Women's Day. And because there were two girls working with Sodosi Original at that time, Jasmina and Ashida, and both of them were in 19 or 20. They had both declined their parents' arranged marriage oh. because they wanted to work. <laughs> so that was in a rural village in West Bengal, and is, this was a huge thing. Sadly, I've never met them, but I uh, have heard about them and found out about it. But, yes, it was a major thing. So they... Um, were earning their money by embroidering. And at that time, were, it was quite good money. I did, at the time, I had some statistics and it was a, a fair wage that they received. So Jasmina spent her money. Her father had poor health, so 
a lot of her money went to assist him and also her younger sister's education. And Ashmina just liked having money and spent it on what she wanted. So <laughs> the whole, to me, it was fascinating that these were two young girls who wanted to experience a career still in their village, but they were wanting to earn money, so very different. And look, that's quite excep exceptional, I think, in a rural village in uh, West Bengal, still exceptional. So uh, to answer your question, Gary, mostly men, but these two girls uh, were involved at that time. And I have photos of Jasmina embroidering one of my designs. So, so a, bu a, um, bunch, a bunch of men and two rebel women, okay. <laughs> yeah, but, they couldn't, but look, the, they couldn't work together. The men would go to the workshop in the town. There's a two-story building where they worked and I visited, but the girls would embroider in their homes. So oh. still there were constraints. Okay. So, uh, and at one stage, I think Hero's uh, sister was involved in the group, but I have no more information on him. So, um, so in 2014-15, I developed this project of, with a, a range of different design ideas, some from my experience with weaving and I think of as grids, woven grids or weft lines, some from different projects that I was doing at the time, but a whole range of um, sh uh, motives and shapes and patterns. And then from that I had some, new, some uh, developed some new designs. And they were very, very specific. They were uh, mainly French knots and in lines, again, weft lines. Uh, so those, that latter group have never been exhibited until now. And that's what's great to see the two projects together, the first stage of Anna Khan and now the more, um, the designs which were done at a later stage. So shall we look at some of the designs? Sure, you bet. Or another question, Gary? No, go ahead. Okay. Let's take out some of these ones here. Yeah, so this, um, these designs are some of the very early um, exploration of different motives. I, also in the project, uh, there's a lot of um, the silk fabric that all of the embroidery is on silk fabric. And a lot of that silk I've dyed with natural dyes, either logwood, as in this one that I'm pointing to, uh, traditional dye, or eucalyptus. So I too use two local eucalyptus, eucalyptus um, uh, pulularis, which is black butt. It's a tree outside my house, very local, and eucalyptus cinerea, which gives this lovely red colour. And the cinerea leaves are round and a lovely soft grey green colour, and they give this beautiful pink, red, apricotty colour. So a lot of us love the co uh, combining scenario with other eucalyptus leaves. So, so uh, the fabric I'd either dyed before embroidered or sometimes the whole embroidery was dyed. So there's um, different motives here. These two were from a workshop I did with uh, Canadian artist Dorothy Caldwell. She came to Sydney and conducted a drawing ideas development workshop and my um, expertise in drawing circles and hatching were part of what I did. My design style is quite straightforward. So I've called, the, the white one is Dorothy's hatching um, or Dorothy's circles. Circles feature quite a lot in my work and I've in the past done a lot of jacquard weaving, including circles. The next frame here is based on a uh, kalam, which is used for kalamkari, the uh, technique of painting silk fabric with natural dyes that a lot of Indian artisans use. So that's based on the kalam, which uh, is the tool for uh, applying the uh, natural dye to the silk. Um, the one at the top here I mentioned, um, my mother was a great craftswoman and at one stage she did some stencil printing and I found in her collections of things, I found some of her stencils and one with a floral motive and that's what I've used for 
the embroideries in this one where the whole embroidery has been over dyed. Oh my. Now, what, uh, what are we using for threads for most of these? So these are just cotton embroidery uh, threads, mercerized threads. Uh, and some have been, they've used more strands than in others. I think some of them have been with three strands and others with more. Uh, and it, those threads I've over dyed also for some. And even though they were mercerized, they did take quite a lot of the natural dye color. Mm -hmm. So I've been steaming. So the fabric I dyed with what we know as eco, eco bundles, uh, wrapping the um, uh, plant leaves or plant material in a silk bundle and then steaming it, and usually without a mordant. If I have used a mordant, it's been an iron mordant because I like dark things, so it's given a yeah. darker colour. April, <laughs> so just... April, could we see a top centre uh, close-up, please? Yeah, that's in your colours. So columns are uh, just, they take a piece of stick and they wrap it with jute fabric and then jute thread. And it's usually, the point at the top is usually in the centre. They're round and the point is, my uh, drawing is a little um, different. But uh, they're so, the column cardi artisans are so skilled with using these columns for painting designs, have very detailed designs with using their column. And Beth, you were going to say something? Uh, no, I was just curious. I, so what is the stitch there? I, I mean, I can't get it to... I think it's it a, chain like a chain stitch. Very, very high chain stitch. Chain stitch. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's what so it looked the, like. So I was just wondering. So there's uh, also the thread is, um, there's some thread I dyed many years ago. There are chemical dyes, but there's a variation in them. So there's different tones in the thread. Uh, yeah, so mainly they do uh, our embroidery. There's a lot of chain stitch. Uh, some it's like a, a a stem stitch or French knots, and there's something called an Ari stitch, which I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, but look, um, so this is like at the at the beginning of this project, it was just exploring different possibilities, and the next lot of designs we can show you are variations of these. There's circles, there's grids, there's ovals. So it's just uh, for me to see how they dealt with these motifs. And I will give them a drawing on the page, on a white page, and we can show you some of those later. Um, they would then prick the design to be able to transfer the motif onto the fabric with um, a solution, and then it's um, embroidered. It, uh, uh, our embroideries use a frame. Uh, most of the ones I saw with Sodosi Original were quite large, like the size of a single bed, oh but my. just a frame. The, the fabric's stretched over. And they're very incredibly skilled. Like, this, this was the thing with our uh, Sodosi Original. I, the scarf that I saw in the very... Um, bold colours, totally unappealing to me. The, the quality of their embroidery was just exceptional. Their ability to detailed embroidery was amazing. And at the time, they were earning a reasonable living, but from doing very watered-down embroidery, very simple embroideries. So part of the project was to give them an opportunity to do what I embroidered, which is really museum-quality embroidery. And, you know, that was just to give them, um, commission them to do that and to give uh, um, give them experience of doing that embroidery, but also developing their design understanding. What uh, What is their market? Is it uh, just local or do they export? So they export. With, they work through Craft Resources Centre, Irani Sen's business, uh, and most of... Um, CRC work with artisans from all over India. I think there's about 40 different groups, and most of it is export. Um, I think at the time, in 2015, Zodosi were uh, earning about 70% of their income from export, mm. but that's because they work through um, CRC and they're a fair trade organisation helping artisans get organized for export and because they're fair trade they 
there are certain um, resources they can draw on and often the artisans are paid half of their money in advance so they can get materials. Yeah. So it's a very supportive uh, arrangement. So the rest, their 30-odd percent was local and that would be commissions for weddings and gifts and celebrations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When Ari was first... Oh, our embroidery first introduced by the Mughals. Like most of the embroidery were for tents or wall hangings or coverings in palatial buildings and palaces and things. So it was quite, was was not so domestic as it is now. <laughs> okay. Okay, so shall we move on to see sure. these other embroideries? Yep, sure. So this was really just exploring different ideas, as I've mentioned, and uh, these three are all as they were embroidered. Yeah. And the next lot, uh, um, again, she, um, this is a lines or grids, and this is again referencing weaving. I, I, most of my world re revolves around weaving and it's a little different for me to be doing embroidery, but it was a great project that I came to really through working with other artisan groups um, that were weavers. Okay, April, can we dwell on that one a little bit there? Um, or, Last and, one? Yeah, that one, yes, please. Now, uh, Liz, it looks like uh, rows and rows of French knots. Is there some... <laughs> You have seen nothing yet, yes. Gary. This is... The smallest of the French knots. Oh, okay. We're about to hit. We will see a lot of French knots. Okay, and I, then it was. I really fell in love with their French knots. I have to say, and that's what I went on to do in the second half of the project. Really, it's French knots and French knots and more French knots. So, but it was. It began with these smaller pieces. Now, is there some symbolism uh, there, or what? What are we trying to accomplish? No, no. No, 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 like this, far, it was really just drawing on motives that I've used. And I mentioned I'm a weaving, this is like the warp and warp lines. And no, it was quite simple and straightforward. And okay. I wanted it to be that way so it was accessible. Some of the motives, like an oval shape, I've used that in jacquard weaving, um, some of my earlier projects. So it was really the driver for the whole project was to work on... Um, introducing a way of designing for them and design development rather than symbolism from okay. commenting from my point of view. So uh, these are finer French knots in this olive, um, uh, Annika, uh, slip lines olive and some that are dyed. So those are threads you've dyed? Not, not in those. Uh, that one I haven't dyed. I provided them. So all of the, the all of the embroidery threads I'm, I provided. Some I've dyed. Okay. And I, it's very clear in one that we'll see soon. The dyeing with the eucalyptus. Okay. So then these are again just more basic designs that you know that different they can possibilities. Do. Yeah. Okay. And actually, they came out of workshops with Hira and Irani, so it was a collab. That aspect of it was collaborative, and they had um, engagement with the, that project too. So these two here are called Earthlines. Uh, this is where my real love of uh, French knots <laughs> begins, and both <laughs> of these have been the threads have been dyed in an eco bundle. So the yarn. Um, it was again cotton embroidery yarn, and it was all dyed in an eco bundle. And this first one by with um, cinerea, and then in the next one with black butt. Holy smokes! We keep we keep losing the signal there, April. Yep, there Sorry, it goes. That's a phone call coming in. Oh. So this is about an A3 size, but there are some that are much larger. Wow. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what other people so are saying. I'm not going to do that. These were done by the two. Well, I know Jasmina, one of the young girls, 
part of Zodosia region. She worked on these, um, and I have a photo of her working on one of them. So, but really, look, they came. Um, the drawing the lines. I'm still drawing lines um, to in my sketchbook, but basically they've come about through weaving. When I'm weaving, I'm envisioning the weaving that's coming, and it's all about inserting the weft. But once they're embroidered, there is this translation into a really rich surface and surface variation. Sometimes as you see a, a horizon line in them too. So. Now, when, when they uh, do these lines, are they following a pattern or is, is it a free form thing? No, they're following my designs. Okay. I can show you, will I get one? I'll get one now. Okay. I'll just, yeah, I'll follow you. Okay. People are always, are saying they they, they could, don't think they could do that many French knots. <laughs> I, I agree. I don't think I could either. So this is um, one of the designs. This is one of the early ones that I did. So that's my oh sorry. These are just drawn with pencil. Okay. And if you, I'll turn it around. Oh, yeah. On the back. You may be able to see uh, the pin, pr pin pricks that they've um, they've pricked each line very, very, with a very fine pin, and that's what's used to translate transfer the design onto the paper. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. So a prick a prick and pounce uh, technique, but with a liquid. You said. Yes. Yeah, so they. Uh, they pr from this design, so they're pricking th through this design to um, a um, tracing paper, a, a clear paper, and then the paper is laid over the fabric and a wash is put over that tracing paper with the pricks. So it's kerosene and something called robin blue or oh. lime. And that gives a mark on the fabric where the embroidery will be. Mm -hmm. And it's a tech and it, it's not permanent. It's a tech technique they use in other uh, artisan communities in India um, with their when they're doing bandhani, which is an Indian tie-dye technique, they use that way of transferring the pattern onto the fabric. So it's done in other sector, yeah. sectors, but using pricking the design. Beth, we had someone else use that kerosene approach, didn't we? I forget. Kerosene, I can't, I can't was, remember. Yeah, there was someone uh, we talked to that used that. Uh, no smoking yes. allowed. Uh, yeah. So yeah. when uh, when I visited, they were gaily mixing up the kerosene without gloves, kerosene solution without gloves. So uh, they were doing a demonstration for me, and they were mixing it up. Uh, basically with bare hands and then applying it with a brush or a stick. And I asked them if they wore gloves. And so we, we had to, the whole process was halted while they went off and found some gloves to put on. <laughs> but basically, like, a lot of the, uh, the conditions in their workshops in terms of our understanding of oh and and health and safety are, um, are quite different. Yeah. They approach things differently. <laughs> Yeah, but they I mean, the main thing really with this project I want to is show their expertise in terms of embroidery. Mm -hmm. Do you want to look briefly at these, April? These are so it's, I mentioned before my mother's uh, stencil and some of the one of the designs came from uh, her stencil project. And this is mm. quite an old stencil from like the 1940s or something. Mm. And then I, th this is the, um, used for the drawing, for the embroidery. Oh, okay. Hey, April, I was born in 1940. Watch that. <laughs> <laughs> so was okay. I. Late. No, Late I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not that and old. But <laughs> did, uh, this is one of their very classic um, designs. Oh, look at that. Moogle inspired embroidery. Oh, there wow. we go. In not traditional colors. Oh, they do a whole range of colors, but they, these are my colors. Yes, I selected the colors. Okay. Here's a quick question. No, um, do they use beads at all? Fine. Yes, they do use beads. They use beads, okay. and they use 
um, they use a thread that has a core and then there's metal wrapped around it. Uh, and they do some couching designs. Like they're very, a whole range of, they're very expert in designing. But yes, they do beads and they do um, metal embroidery. Yeah. Oh, good, April. Yeah. Is let's it, look at that a little bit. Yeah. Wow. It's, I don't know. It's, it's such fine work. Like I've never seen really chain stitch of this kind of minutia. Wow. And these flowers that are full of French, tiny, tiny French knots are impressive. So much dimension to it. Wow. And it's such a small motif. Hmm. Like, you know, for context, like, you know. Oh, my. Yeah. And I have oh. to, it's yeah. about oh. 12 centimeters. High. I don't know how many inches. <laughs> about six. six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Less than six inches, I'd say. Yeah, about yeah. five inches. I think it's beautiful. Wow. Uh, their expertise is incredible, I think. And this is like, I've had involvement with quite a few different artists and groups, and they're, that's the thing, they're so skilled at what they, whether it be block printing or uh, uh, our embroidery or comfort embroidery or bandani. They're just amazing expertise. Mm. Yes, beautiful. Okay, back so to back the walls. To the, back to the walls. So shall we just, shall we start here? So this is the, Gary, this is where the French knots really start. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the only stitch in these three, again, I've called them earth lines, um, are uh, French knots, and uh, these are all on dyed fabric, eco um, bundle dyed fabric, with the same uh, eucalyptus leaves. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, with these, uh, there are, I did the lines, uh, some of them less variation than the other, uh, and then I started working with the lines and in the one on the right hand side using quite different colors so that was a possibility for another stage which i've never done with this project but i do um i think there's i could take the project further in terms of i was thinking of quilts and piecing the um the different areas together like the black and the tan piecing it together and i've also done quite a bit of that piecing fabric together. So that was the beginning of a train of thought, but didn't go any uh, further. Actually, it's hard doing projects long distance. Like I've visited Calcutta many times and with this project was able to meet with Hira and visit the workshop. But basically I wasn't there when the work was being done. Uh -huh. And there's some issues of a, a reason, especially with the final framing of some of these, it wasn't easy to do because the borders were slightly different and than what I expected. So yeah. that's off. that's been a problem. Doing things long distance. Yes. And, so, and okay. all this fabric okay. you dyed. All of it I dyed, yeah. So I've really uh, provided all of the materials. Like even with the white ones I provided the silk. Um, and this fabric I've dyed too. Okay, and so someone asked, what's the, um, Khan asked, what's the time frame for one of these pieces to be done? You know, you know the whole collaborative process. So the whole collaborative project process took about two years. So we okay. haven't seen some of the more latter ones, but it was over a period of the Ala Khan project was over from mid 2014 to possibly the early 2016. Some of the latter ones I got back then. I've labelled them 2016. Whether they, uh, but as I say, how long each one took, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know that. I didn't ask that question. It yeah. might be in my file somewhere, but it's not in my head. Like I don't. Um, but when do you send the design notes? When you get it back? Yes, so the last lot, the very long panels, these three and the very long panels, I would have sent to them uh, in August 2015, and I got them back early the next year, okay. 2016. But, you know, I would have said to them there's no rush because I didn't have a plan to exhibit them 
Mm-hmm. And to give a context for how much work we've done, we should go on to the big pieces. <laughs> okay. These two. Oh my. So I think they should be in some space, uh, palatial entrance foyer or conference center or hotel. That's where I envisage these be. <laughs> Probably expect them to be framed, though. I prefer things not covered or textiles not covered, so hence the um, box frames for the first series. But these I've just, uh, they're backed and uh, they're hanging, they're quite, they're hanging quite uh, smooth. But I think there's a big issue with textiles and whether they're framed or not. But a lot of people like things under glass, so as to protect the embroidery or the textile. Okay. Well, those, uh... So these are meter, they're nearly, they're meter 90 long. I'm not too sure what that is in yards. <laughs> but you know, it's their long. They're long. They're long. They're long. <laughs> A, a, me, a meter, a meter ninety. So yes, yard and a half. The embroidery is actually a meter. Yeah, a meter ninety. Okay, yard and a half then, somewhere in there. Yeah, so it's a bit more. Oh yeah, it's probably a yard and a half. Because a meter is shorter than a yard, isn't it? Meters thirty nine inches, yards thirty six inches. Yeah. Uh, ah. Mm. Meters are three foot or near ish. Mm. Um. So the one that uh, April's filming at the moment, that's all the threads have been dyed with Cinerea, this wonderful eucalyptus dye. So uh, the red dyes in eucalyptus were found quite early in Australia. So uh, when the English came to Australia, they hadn't seen eucalyptus before. Cook hadn't seen. He was the first. When he visited, he um, uh, they we were able to see eucalyptus for the first time. And then when Arthur Phillip came in 1788, they started doing quite a lot of experiments with eucalyptus to try to find an industry. So at that stage, eucalyptus were only in Australia. But um, in the 1800s, uh, there was a couple of um, botanical gardens here that propagated eucalyptus and spread eucalyptus worldwide and like, that places like California, they're regarded as native. Indians regard eucalyptus as native. So in Portugal also, like it's, it's they're everywhere now in the world. <laughs> but very early on, they were only here. And it was quite early on they discovered that the eucalyptus had colour in their leaves or colour in the material. But it was the oil from eucalyptus that became the industry here. But... I've done quite a bit of research on that because Australia was settled 70 years before Perkins dis- discovered aniline dyes. So my question was, how, what did they do in Australia for colouring textiles? And they did use some um, local dyes for wool and suiting and things, but most of the dyes came from India because at that time there was a settlement here. There was a lot of huge trade between Australia, Sydney and India, and particularly West Bengal. Well, Bengal it was at that time. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the a lot of the dyes came from there. So that, that's an irrelevant bit of research I've done. Well, but it, <laughs> but, but I, I I find that fascinating because that that's one of the things I enjoy about these things in Australia is you get such an influence from so many different cultures. And uh, mm. and you see that, and we've seen it in other exhibits too. So uh, it, uh, mm. yeah, I, I, it's an interesting part of it. And April, yeah. when April, when you had the angle going up, we really saw the texture and how thick those right. knots are. I, yeah, I felt like it was the you know the Star Wars introduction. <laughs> you know? Oh, there, yes, there it is. <laughs> in the galaxy. <laughs> Excellent. Liz, I do have a quick question. Mm -hmm. Liz, can I ask a quick question? Yes. So do you guys ever use copper as as your, I know you said you used um, iron on some of it, but do you ever use copper? I haven't. Oh, well, in terms of teaching, I have copper and tin I've used for some experiments, but they impact the fabric, you know, the 
the handle of the fabric afterwards, whether it's wool or cotton, is not that good. So the main mordants that are used here are alum and iron. Mm -hmm. And if you like darker colours like I do, iron is used because it's known as a saddening agent. It turns things darker. And it's used as a dye anyway, iron. So, look, yes, I know of cotton as a mordant, but I've not really much experience with it at all. Okay. i just curious. Mm. just curious. But, you know, now a lot of us, a lot of people prefer not to use chemical salts or as mordants. They use alternative mordants like salt and vinegar and different mm -hmm. things. So as an alternative to using the chemicals. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, just... I'll just make another comment about when the British came to Australia. Um, like if they had talked to the local people, <laughs> the native in ha original inhabitants, uh, inhabitants, they would have been able to access knowledge of dyes. So that's another uh, interesting point at that time when the British came to Australia in 1788. Like there were people in living in Australia, the First Nations people that had great expertise for uh, dyes and, and mainly for their baskets, for dyeing materials which they would use, um, weave in the, and make baskets from. So, uh, but they didn't see that. They didn't, they didn't ask a question. They weren't <laughs> interested. Like it was quite, the um, politics came yeah. into it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that's my historical just, research. Just a few words, Liz. <laughs> So uh, just beside those two pieces, we have two. There's another three on the other side. So in the original exhibition of Alana Khan, uh, I'd hoped to show these small pieces, which are the embroideries on my weavings, so small weaving with cotton and wool blend threads. But they didn't turn up. There. I didn't get them back in time for the exhibition. So I... Embroidered the uh, exhibited the silk. Sorry, exhibited the weavings without embroideries, and <laughs> people like them. Uh, very interesting. But these are um, just five small pieces. Again, with ex exploring different ideas of the grid and lines uh, on my weaving. Um, to and in the lower one here is, is with the weft has been it's a cotton weft and it's been dyed. Again, an eco bundle with both of these eucalyptus. The, the threads. So what threads do you use for the weaving? Sorry, Gary. Oh, I, what, I, I wanted to catch what April said. I said, what threads do you use for the weaving? So in the weaving, uh, they're all done on the same warp. They're, it's a wool blend thread, and the darker ones have the same thread in the weft. And the lighter, there's two that are lighter, is a cotton thread that's been dyed. And I do, when I put them up yesterday, I thought, oh, selvages are nice. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I had to compliment myself, really, but yeah. it's nice to see. That's good all right. Like, all weavers like to have a nice selvage or be able to control their selvages. I only recently learned how to remember it. Wet is left. Uh, left. This is how I figured out which is which. The way I figured it out, you know, the warp is on the loom so, and you weave the weft. So you weave W-E, the one that's W-E. Right. Okay. So you weave okay. the weft and it's the one that goes, it's interlaced into the warp threads. Mm. So it's the one that goes from selvage to selvage. The weft goes from selvage yeah. to selvage. And the warp threads are the ones that are yeah. on the loom. <laughs> okay, so the last... Um, is just a, a couple, of, one more panel, and again, um, and three small embroideries on the weave. And again, they're motives you've seen already, but just done in a different way. Actually, it would be quite interesting with some of the larger pieces to count how many French knots in a line. Oh, my. I mean, maths, multiply it. Multiply it by, so anyway, it's a lot. But there was never a question from the embroiderers. Like there, I think the whole point of the project was to um, present their work in a different way, and to, in terms of design development, ideas for them for future projects. So there was never a, a comment. The only question I got is, 
when have you got more designs, Liz? We want to do more designs. <laughs> <laughs> so, and seeing the work in the exhibition here in the Gallery 76, I'm thinking, why haven't I done more designs? I should do some more work for the embroiders. Because I heard, I contacted CRC about them specific, the other day and heard that, yes, they're still um, working together. There's a small group of men that work in the workshop and they have, I think there are six men on salary and then 20 that they call on when they had projects. So that's quite... Uh, Hero has done quite well with his uh, small little uh, Zadosi original group. Mm -hmm. But, uh, again, their expertise is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Liz, you were telling me a really sweet story right. before about oh, a yes. friend came to visit you when you were in India and you took them to the embroidery <laughs> workshops. Yes. So this is was actually in another state, in Gujarat, which is on the other side of India, but it was... We were visiting a um, RE embroidery workshop and my friend Rod's son was 10 at the time and we said that we were going to see an embroidery workshop and he said, Ugh, embroidery, that's girl stuff. <laughs> so then when we visited the workshop and he saw the men sitting at the table embroidery, he was in sitting beside them and he was learning how to do embroidery. Uh -huh. and he was, the whole time we were there, he was doing his embroidery. So we teased him and said, oh, Dexter, we'll come back in a year's time. You can stay here and become a skilled embroiderer. <laughs> anyway, but, you know, this idea that embroidery, it's men, it's girls' stuff. Right. Because um, in India, so much of it is done by men. Yeah. But anyway, Dexter's now a, um, a film student, so he's still using his creative ideas. There we go. It's interesting. Go. Anyway, yes, uh, like it's the perception of embroidery, and even for a young boy, perception that it was girl stuff and ugh, didn't want to have anything <laughs> to do with that. <laughs> uh, okay, have you got any more uh, questions or comments? No, I think we're, we, we, we caught up. See, yeah. Can I get a photo of Jasmina? Oh, yes, I could show you that. Mm. Uh, can you see that? Do you want it out? Yeah, we be better. So here's a photo of Jasmina. She's you, and in the photo you can see this is the frame that oh. the silk fabric stretched on, and here's my sheet of paper with all the threads, and she's. Um, these are the needle is in her hand, and that little section's been embroidered. And here are the lines. All the French knots. All the French knots. Yeah. <laughs> and this is Hera, who, and he's holding a little headband, and that's how they they have a lot of commissions for small things like that. And again, from my point of view, it's a shame that they weren't utilising their. Um, Expertise. Mm -hmm. Do you want to see more of these? No. Um, no. The the thread the thread that they're using it looks rather thick. Uh, number five pearl maybe. Um, that's a technical question. Oh, Gary. sorry. In, in, <laughs> in French knots, yes, I think that's a much thicker thread. But with, on the scarves, it's. Not. Yeah. So, um, with, yes, with the, the long panels, I think they used a couple of sections of thread. Like they're eight strands, aren't they? Embroidery thread, or six. Sorry. It varies on the design, Gary, okay. how, many, how thick the thread is, basically. Okay. Well, that, that scarf is beautiful. Yeah, it is so, gorgeous. Is this open? Yeah, you can slide it. So here are more scarves. This is a gorgeous colorway. Oh, God. Oh, my. Yes, I nearly dragged my 
phone off the bench. <laughs> Don't do that. Wow. And this is another design. That is gorgeous. Yes, so I'm inspired to do some more scarves. I'll say. I did, um, yeah, when the Fabric of India exhibition opened at the v &A in London, I wore one of these scarves and the curator of that exhibition was very impressed. <laughs> so I thought that was a good indication that they were, the quality was high. Right, right. That's beautiful. And like, there's such fine little motifs. And in the scarves, it's so long. Yeah. So the girl hanging out in our shop in November. Anyone in your Christmas present idea? <laughs> if you're one of those people who get Christmas shopping done ridiculously early. Perfect. I I I too could own one of so those, huh? Oh, yeah. that's what they're asking. You're being asked, so we'll have to put up a a page or something, uh, a link somehow, Gary, because people are asking how to purchase them. Oh, okay. You can email. You can email me. Okay. <laughs> I'll put uh, I'll put April's I'll put April's email in the show notes, and then you can yeah. contact her and get yourself a scarf. Boy, those are a treasure. But we could home. also can, we could also order more too if they're particular colorways. Like that's that's the thing I've been thinking just re, with doing this exhibition again. Why am I? Why don't I have more of these or different sizes? Or the one I was wearing is slightly narrower and practical. I mean, so size. So Liz I could runs, do that. Um, uh, talks and um, talks, uh, runs like I courses going to India. Oh yes. And he's meant to run one this year, which did not happen, but maybe next year. Mm -hmm. So with my visits to India and visiting artisans, I uh, developed a course for the university, University of New South Wales, uh, called Cultural Textiles. And so it was to introduce students to handmade textiles. Uh, first, the course ran in Gujarat and then more recently in West Bengal. So that was a great success. And in a way, it was a, a career changer for a number of students because it changed their understanding of what they could do as a designer. Uh, and then in the last year or so, I've taken, as well as taking students for the course, I've taken non-students, um, so anybody interested in weaving and uh, textiles. We've gone to Gujarat and also to West Bengal in the northeast. So I was there in January and February this year and I was planning to go to take a trip to Gujarat in December this year, but sadly that's not happening. Great. So, and because of the climate in India, really the good times to visit are December, January and February. So it's probably going to be December 2021 before I return, but... Um, Hopefully uh, that will happen then. So if anybody's interested in a cultural textiles tour of India, they should um, let us, let April or I know because um, I could put them on the list. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, um, I was I was I'll retire from the university soon, so it's um, a retirement project. So I'm very keen to have lots of tours while I'm still able to go. Yeah, April. <laughs> April, would you return to the scarf that um, Liz was wearing? Oh please. Yes. Sure. Just so we can explore the colorway a little bit because it's beautiful. Right. And someone wanted to see the back of it. We always want to see the back side, you know. So they're lined. It's the same oh, okay. silk fabric that's, so you don't, the actual back of the embroidery is covered in these scarves. Okay. So this okay. one too, um, April, you could take a photo. So with these, I selected the colours and there were 12 or 13 colours. And, you know, the, I think in this one, interesting group of colours, but I, they, they decide where to use each colour. And I think the darker tones they've done have been more successful than this. But look, somebody may like the bright pinks and yellows. Yes. Such so the one, the scarf I'm wearing is um, 
narrower. It just has three of these large uh, flower motifs, whereas the other two have uh, six. And also there's a difference to some have a wider border and more detail in the motive, like this yeah. here. And then there's less detail in some of these motives here. A April, that, yeah, April, can you just, just dwell on that so it can really focus in and lock in? Just so we can see the texture. There we go. It's amazing to think it just comes down to a couple of different embroidery stitches. Yes. And how they work with the colors and they're in this case here they're alternating the colors that's just a fine chain stitch there here like a lot of them are two colors together mm -hmm. you can just see those faint color variations mm -hmm. yep beautiful uh, and you know normally braid uh, borders are great you know machine braid but it's all hand Embroidered. Embroidered. So I think my love affair with French knots started with these, this particular flower here. Yes. <laughs> Actually, my mother did quite a lot of French knots. I've been um, thinking I should mention that. She did little um, pin cushion, co little covers that were covered with French knots and randomly coloured, but highly skilled too. Hmm. Beautiful work. Wow. Excellent. Well, yeah, so it's been good. Like, I I also buy other textiles from India to sell here. So originally it was just my designs that were made in India, and then I realised that the Indian artisans are making interesting textiles, and I have been selling those here too. So it's been uh, – I've been doing this now for quite a while, um, in a way promoting what Indian artisans do, but – and that ranges from embroidery, our embroidery, to kamsa, to block printing, to bandhani. And now a lot of the artisans are using natural dyes in, in weaving or in embroidery. So mm -hmm. It's all interesting. Uh, My Liz, second home. Uh, yeah, I yes, can tell. Sir. Liz, when, when somebody says India to me, all I see is visions of dust and pollution. Uh, uh, is West, West Bengal not like that? No, like some of the villages, there's rubbish everywhere. And even they, they do have a Clean Up India campaign, but um, I don't think it's been that successful. It's, <laughs> um, I usually go in winter and it's after the monsoon. It's not that dusty. Like, yes, there are areas that are more desert prone, but um, not that dusty. It's an amazingly beautiful country in terms of the countryside and the people and the people's manner and their uh, generosity. Like, it's, I find that overwhelming. It is confronting at times in terms of the way people live and some people on the streets and begging, um, but that's, that's India. Um, yeah. You do see it. You see it a lot, but you there is such a rich history and heritage and there, there's so much of interest there. Well, and that's why I asked because, you know, that's the impression that we get is just dirt and pollution. But then, you know, it's, India is so old, so much history that there has to be so much more behind it. So once you get past that, mm. then you can really come to appreciate mm. the culture then. Mm. Mm. So in terms of cultural textiles, in my view, I could run that course or take a tour to people to any state in India and they'll have rich textiles to look at, being weaving or block printing or embroidery. So it is, in terms of textiles, it's an incredibly rich country and their heritage and expertise. And it's still, it's going on. There's probably, there may be less people working in those areas these days, but there are a lot of people uh, still that a visitor can visit and learn from. Yeah. Yeah. All right, excellent. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks, thank Gary. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. And thank you very much. Yes. That's good. Pity you're not here to come and see it. Yes, oh, someday, <laughs> someday. But Thanks. the wonders of, wonders of modern technology and Skype. And right.
um, April Skillet holding the, her phone <laughs> and taking photos. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thanks very much. All right. Excellent. Thanks, okay. April. Thanks, thanks Liz. Really appreciate bye -bye. it. Bye-bye. All right. Thanks, everybody, for bye -bye. joining us. All right. Thank you. Bye.